we'd love to welcome Gil Bash and Ritesh Patel to uh, uh, to give us uh, some insights into this particular topic. Gil, Ritesh, welcome to the program. Uh, pleasure to have you uh, around, and I'm sure the audience would love to hear about uh, uh, who you are, where you're from, what you're doing. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll jump in. We'll jump in. This is past Ritesh's bedtime. He is he's he's dialing in from London on his way to Dubai and um, where he's about to be honored uh, by industry as being the uh, digital health global leader. So thank you, Ritesh, who I'll turn this over to in a second for uh, jumping in on your world tour to um, spend time with us at Columbia. My pleasure, Gil. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, great to be with you guys. In fact, you know, Gil, it's so funny. Victor, we met at we the have met. Summit last yes. year. That's right. That was the was first thinking. time I'd met him when he was talking about this entertainment thing. And I was like, wow, this is very interesting. So it's good to hear. Still, He's going strong. Yeah, it's actually also it's a great aspect of what Stan and Jerry and Ansley have done, which is to bring together a global community of people who are really committed to this space. And uh, Jerry, you'll have to forgive us. We're going to change it up a little bit in light of the last two days. And uh, Ritesh and I discussed the fact that we would go broader than digital health, uh, uh, rather telehealth, telehealth as well. Yeah. We're going yeah. um, to open up the hood on some of the things we've heard during the last two days, and I think uh, illuminate some of the, the data, especially for those people who are both on the investment side of this and on the... Um, essentially looking for a series funding. Um, so Ritesh, I'll turn it over to you. You'll talk a little bit about the research we've all just completed um, recently, just a few days ago, actually, and is still ongoing. And I know that we'll present another round of this research at JP Morgan in, a, in about five weeks, but you take it away and give the background to the data we'll share. Certainly. So thank you, everybody. Uh, we, yeah, Gil and I decided, you know what, rather than bore you again with a number of PowerPoint presentations, we're taking through what's happening in the market. This is a report that's hot off the press. We, we actually released it at Health in Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago, and it tracks basically about 200 million data points of digital health with about 12,000 ventures globally. So it's a report that we've done in partnership with the guys at Galen Growth and Health Alpha. Health Alpha are the tech company that basically is tracking what is being spent where, by whom, where are the mega deals, where is money going? And it's a really interesting report because it doesn't just go into the money's going here and this is how much spend, but it goes into a little bit more detail as to who's doing it, what are some of those mergers and acquisitions happening, and then a little trend as to what we see going forward. So as Gil mentioned, this was uh, done at, and we presented it at an event we did at Health, and then the complete year-end report for 2022 will be released uh, at the JP Morgan event on January the 8th in San Francisco, which will cover the entire year. But we're happy to share with you the, thir the third quarter report, which is three quarters of 2022. Thank you. And so just some, some background for everyone here. Ritesh is, is, a, is a digital health uh, innovation theorist. He travels the world looking at uh, systems and, and across the board. Um, I'm eclectic. Uh, Jerry asked us to introduce ourselves. I have been part of private equity. I, I worked with uh, GTCR of Chicago, today a $10 billion fund, um, was a CEO of a, of a billion dollar company, I serve on some boards, privileged to work with Ritesh. I'm not sure who works with, who works for who, or who works <laughs> at what times, but, but we work together quite well, regardless of where we are in the world. And I, I, I just want to share a perspective of someone who also served on the uh, CMS Part D working group that a, a lot of people talk about the uh, patient centricity. And, um, and I, I don't wanna counter that, heaven forbid, because I started my career in health as a provider um, and I'm passionate about people's well-being. But I, I do wanna say that the, unfortunately, the, unfortunately, the patient is not the customer of the health system. The system is the customer of the health system. And um, as someone who's had to make investment decisions, who sits on corporate boards, 
who, who champions along with Ritesh um, an enterprise that's worldwide. Uh, I, I think that I would find that these data are going to illuminate also for you um, some of the things you really need to focus in on, the categories that um, are being funded and why they're being funded around the world. And we'll get into a little bit of that because um, if you're looking for money, um, and some of you are, some of you are looking to deploy active capital. Uh, these data will give you a sense of, of where the smart money is going. So as you know, uh, last year was a banner year for funding in, in di the digital health category, but it was also a year of exuberant investment. It was uh, patients separated from physicians, provider systems worried about their, their revenue flow and people poured money into the category, not necessarily strategically. 2022 is return actually, or honed return to previous years where mm -hmm. suddenly we're seeing strategic money deployed. And it's not a question of up and down money. So a lot of people have said previously, uh, well, it's, there's decreased funding. That's not true. That's not true at all. You have to take a look at it in the aggregate and, um, and understand what's going on here. So what we look at, if you can go forward. Um, so if you look at this, go back, I'm sorry, one other slide. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. If you look at this, actually, if you see on the left side of the graph, the Series A funding, um, if you look at what's going on, funding is shifting shifting from late stage funding to early stage funding, where people who want to put capital into work have to deploy less capital and get more say over the, the business strategy of the venture. So what happened before was we were seeing in 2022, a lot of late stage investment, 2021, 2020, 2021 rather, 2020, a lot of late stage investment. Now we're seeing a flip in 2022 to earlier stage investment. So per capita, per capita on the aggregate, we're actually seeing more money come into the category, not less money come into the category. It's just that less money is needed to fuel innovation at the earlier stages of the idea. And equity is getting more voice in terms of the business model of the enterprise itself. Do not compare or do not think less money is coming into the category. It's I think just being yeah. distributed differently. So uh, the, one of the other things we heard at Health when we had some of the VCs also present as part of this data was they're seeing more funding towards uh, clinical evidence-based stuff, which is approved uh, and, and, and works and less funding towards companies that were going for eyeballs and more companies that had business models that could generate revenue. So initially it was, you know, I can, I, I need to raise this money because I need to go get 2 million patients next month, you know, direct to consumer kind of thing. What they're seeing now is more of a, I have an interesting business model. It's a platform. I'm selling to a health system. There's revenue there. And I've got evidence that clinically or from a trial or a FDA approval process that this actually works. So there's some more diligence going on as opposed to just, I can get more eyeballs. Absolutely. Let's go forward because I know our time is limited. Yeah. We are, are some of our slot. So th this is just the reinforcement. The, the venture distribution now is by stage. And so for those of you who are in earlier stages of development, you might be more anxious about getting money because you think that there's less money. Actually, for those of you who are at the earlier stages of your, of your life cycle, um, there's, there's per capita, per, per percentage, more money is going to be available. Yeah. So keep that in mind. We're going to go forward again because I want to be respectful of. Exactly. Of so, so this is the big aspect. Where is the money going? So we often say digital health. Well, as Ritesh just said, it's, that's, the, that's the broad category. That's universal. That's yeah. why he's in London on his way to Dubai. Put that aside. Here's where the money is going and not going in terms of where investors are savvy. So what you see is it's still going to non-communicable diseases yeah. in the category. Keep that in mind, non-communicable diseases. Now, in 2021, there was a huge investment in COVID-related services. That's, we're now 
transitioning into a different phase of the COVID era where tracking and diagnostic of COVID related variants is now gone to the back burner. We're back to business, back to 2020, back to 2020, 2019 investment. And so you're seeing earlier stage investment in non-communicable diseases. Take a look at this graph. Obviously, oncology, mental health, cardiovascular disease, GI, diabetes, they're still vibrant. That's where the money was going prior to COVID. Money's going back to those categories, earlier stages. Interestingly enough, where money is declining is to some extent what we think. And I do want to make a mention of telehealth right now. Yeah. Telehealth has declined from 20. 21 to 2022, but it's not declined. A year to year, if you look at it year to year, yes, it declined. Absolutely. We've moved to a hybrid system. That's why some people need to be back in the office to be seen by their clinician. Some people can be handled by telehealth. 2023 is going to see a different system, not virtual, not an office, not even hybrid. We're going to see, we predict, staged invitation. I don't need to see these patients at all in the office. I do need to see these patients in the office. Let's handle those on Tuesday. That's my telehealth day. We're going to actually see the supply chain of patient management start to come into play in 2023 and beyond, whether it's clinical trials, whether it's patient visits to physicians, the game is gonna change. Next slide, please. So yeah, I'm here in the UK, Gil, and you know the, we had lunch today with a bunch of NHS folks in the the GPs were all saying Monday to Thursday, they see patients, Friday, they do telehealth. Yeah, the, uh, by the way, the UK is a model to watch. That's probably why you're there, Ritesh. Yeah. I, I, I know that you're in the search of the, of the perfect curry dish, but, <laughs> but also looking at telehealth. Yeah. By the I way, everybody, the, I haven't found Ritesh, the curry dish yet. Just, Ritesh owns three amazing restaurants. <laughs> in the New York metro area called Brick Lane Curry. It's not a pitch for his restaurant, <laughs> but if you ping him and need to get into Jersey City, Montclair or New York City, Brick Lane Curry, you're, you're speaking to the man right now. He can get you a reservation in this hard to get spot. I can get you a decent curry. That's I'm, sure. I'm still trying to get a table there, but uh, <laughs> that's because I work with him. I'm last on the list. But, but if you take a look at the regional funding right now, this is a concern. This is a concern, yeah. mark this, it's a worry. Here's the, here's, the, here's the scoop here. The funding, when we look at total dollars, is down in North America. It is not down in the Middle East. It is not down in Europe. I'll talk why for a second. In Israel, predominantly 92.6 of the funding is directed toward Israel in the Middle East. And the rest actually is United Arab Emirates. Why? Why is funding strong in Europe and in Israel? Three points. Consider this in your business planning. Really strong regulatory system yeah. that appreciates the value of digital health. One. Two. Academic medical centers that open the doors and have incubators, accelerators, and funds like Sheba Medical Center that has ARC all around the world, I might add, and sees digital health as an asset and care. So guess what? It is the world's biggest national, biggest national pilot program going on. You've got 9 million people participating in digital health related programs. And third, third, you have clear reimbursement patterns in countries like Germany, France, United Kingdom, and Israel. That's why the money is heading there. And last but not least, you have a population that leans into it willingly and participates. Those are business factors you need to look at. If you're attending the HIT Lab from those markets, take note, take advantage of it. If you're sitting here from the United States, North America, take note. In your business planning, you need to make sure early up, what's your reimbursement strategy? What's your regulatory strategy? What is going to be your academic medical center acquisition strategy? If you don't have that in the business plan, 
you're going to have a harder time getting to the money. Ritesh, anything to add here? Yeah, the only thing I would add in the US, the academic health centers have also figured this out. There was an announcement by General Catalyst where they're partnering up with 15 academic centers who are all getting together to incubate and innovate around digital health because they're also getting frustrated. So the 15 academic centers will create an open innovation hub and then General Catalyst will be the capital provider for those innovations that they believe can be distributed within those academic centers. So you're going to start seeing new interesting models coming out where people are starting to incubate digital health in different ways than the normal Silicon Valley or, you know, uh, Silicon Alley route from New York, for example. Let's go on. Again, take a look at this, take a look at this, and you're going to see if you look over quarter to quarter, once again, strong funding in hubs of innovation that have strong regulatory systems, strong regulatory systems, solid talent base to draw from, and willing medical practitioners. Yeah. If you don't have that, it's a harder climb. Just consider that. This slide really reinforces what Ritesh was saying. Again, one of the things I would really look at here, really look at, is this is a, a decline we're seeing a decline in exits. We're seeing a decline in exits. And that's also why the smart money is going earlier stage. It's going longer term. It's concerned about exits for uh, companies that are, are more developed. I would definitely take this into consideration. Again, look at the funding. Funding is up in every place but North America. Yeah. Anything to add here? The only thing, no, uh, somebody's asked if they were going to get a copy of the slides. I think, I think they have to pay us a ton of money. Report. What do you think, Ritesh? I think we should give the report. Just send the link. All right, we'll give them the free report. report. But it's yeah. not, look, we have, this is, we're giving you snippets of a lot of data that's creatively presented and thoughtful. What I'm going to do is, um, um, Ansley, Jerry, Stan, if you agree, we will send you the complete report as a PDF. And you're welcome to send it to the entire HitLab community. Um, compliments of HitLab. That's very kind of you, Gil. Thank you. Uh, let's go on and wrap up. Last, last two slides, the key areas. <clears throat> so again, Ritesh, you take it away, please. No, no, no. I think it's more around you, what you were saying earlier around patient solutions, diagnostics. I think the big thing around here is that we are seeing less and less of the direct to consumer and more and more about the connector dot platforms, research solutions, population health stuff that's starting to get more traction. So if you've got to tools or if you're looking at things that are very B2C oriented, for example, it may be a little tougher, but if you've got something that's more health system oriented or a platform, you know, with the open data rules, now coming into play in the US, we, we think we're going to see in 23, a larger number of data companies coming out who are trying to get all that disparate data into one dashboard, platforms that can integrate data, that sort of stuff. So you'll see more of that happening. Nothing more to add, you nailed it. Let's go to the last slide and, and, um, and um, handle. So, so this is really showing us the fact that um, therapeutic categories, it's not just about the technology, it's about moving the category forward and integrating into the category of therapy. How do you provide more value to clinicians, to pharmaceutical companies, to provider systems, to payer systems, to the health ecosystem? How do you reduce fragmentation of care, not add to the fragmentation of care? And if you can show that in your business model, it's not only needed, I know everybody says patient unmet need. Put that aside. The system rules here. Unfortunately, sadly, not the patient. Next thing that rules, money. Who's getting what? If you can address that in the technology, you're moving forward. And if you can't, expect it to be a long slog. And then as Ritesh just said on the slide, he moved forward, you can move it forward. We thank you. Thank you for your time, everybody. Uh, and uh, we'll send uh, the PDF to you guys so you can send it to all of the attendees, uh, uh, Jerry and, and 
No, that's very kind of you guys. Thank you so much for uh, for a very very animated uh, and lively uh, presentation <laughs> uh, and and conversation between you both. Of course, is really wonderful uh, hearing you both bounce. Uh, some ideas uh, from each other, and you're getting you're getting a lot of love in the in the chat and and the reactions as well. Well, Ritesh um, and I will be playing. Actually, we'll be presenting the full report at Piccadilly Cir Circus. Circus. No, no, no. It's Hyde Park Speakers Corner. Hyde Park. Oh my, Hyde Park Speakers Corner. So, <laughs> yeah. so, um, and then we have another gig coming on at uh, at uh, Ten Baker Street, the Sherlock Holmes restaurant in London. So. You can see I us. You, pr this you promised me Carnegie Hall, Gil. What can I say? We're, we're working it. We're working it. Okay. First Hit Lab, then Carnegie Hall. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. There Thank you, Jerry. There, there's definitely levels to this, guys, of course. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, feel free to put that in the chat, guys, so that uh, folks can uh, uh, folks know where you're, you're going to be live and in person um, presenting this report, um, just in case they missed it. Um, we do have a couple of questions from the crowd. We, got, we, we do have a couple more minutes uh, to spend with you. Uh, before we move okay. on um and uh, uh andy here uh might have missed some of it at the beginning but uh, he asks um in your opinion guys where do you think digital health funding is headed in the future and is there any areas of healthcare that you think are going to receive more funding than not yeah I, I i i'll kick off and then i want to make sure that ritesh has plenty of time to answer so so look the, I, i'm gonna take the question to a different place, the, the places where I see trouble. And Ritesh will talk about the places he sees cash. I see trouble whenever people show me a presentation where I they talk about the need, they talk about their grandmother had diabetes, um, all the sob stories, uh, you know, the personal stories. There are countless stories out there. Uh, um, generally, what I see is um, where I see money going, and funding is how can you express how the idea is going to make the system work better, faster, less expensive. You're going to streamline. You're going to make sure that it is compatible with CMS, either part D or part B in the system. And also the lift for the individual provider in terms of training and knowledge of how to deploy with their office is low, is light. If you're not addressing that, I don't see money coming in. Ritesh, now you 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 be the optimistic one. Yeah, no, I here's the optimism side of it, which is around platforms. We're seeing more and more funding going towards people who are looking at a holistic platform to integrate data uh, capability. So, you know, the 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 Livongo Teladoc model but you know, uh, taking it further, anybody who's connecting the dots as opposed to a one-stop solution, the one-stop solution may work for a specific use case, but the funding seems to be going more towards a, where is the connected dots and how are you bringing care holistically as part of this endeavor? And that will get more funding next year. And I think there's going to be a large amount of data people who are also going to come into the marketplace to try and get handle of the vast array of data that sits in the electronic health records to give to the patient. That's what the open data rule was all about. Yeah. I mean, you, the patient, should have access to your electronic health record. It's and next time we do this, Ritesh, uh, can, I be the, can I be the positive one? You can be the naysayer? Sure. Okay. Jerry, back to you. <laughs> no, fantastic, guys. That's really awesome, and I hope that uh, I hope that answers Andy's question. Uh, there's another question here, guys. Uh, very quickly, um, Tom, uh, I think in the chat asked, uh, "Is the optics around Web three problematic in the VC ecosystem?" What do you think, Ritesh? I'll let you handle that one. Yeah, if when it comes to healthcare, there are pockets of use cases that are being well used for the for Web three point oh, but it's very nascent. It's around mainly using AR VR for patient. Man, you know, pain management, you know, that sort of thing. We're not seeing a full-blown metaverse-oriented health play just yet. Gil seems to live in the metaverse. That's now. right. I, I'm not even here, by the way, Jerry. Yes, this, yeah, this, that's not you're Gil. Seeing, you're you're that's seeing the player, That's the ready player version of Gil that we're seeing at the moment. So uh, there are other industries where the metaverse is taking off. If you look at consumer goods, there's a lot of drinks companies, brands, consumer goods brands that are you know, putting up shops and that sort of thing. I think on the healthcare side, 
we haven't met any VCs that are completely focused on it or looking at it as a potential play yet that I know of, Gil. I just keep running to somebody. Yeah, I, I just want to add that I have a column up right now on Medica, M E D I K A dot life that talks about um, AI and the metaverse um, that you can read my point of view. Big problem with the metaverse, it's AI, metaverse, VR, artificial reality. I'm on board. I buy in problem, problem, big problem. Doctors are resistant and find right now that it conflicts with their sense of being. And that's the biggest problem here. Doctors who, who jumped in on Da Vinci as a surgical training tool, obviously are some of the best surgeons in the business but the bulk of the, the surgical community still likes to believe it's all about them. Yeah. So you, you'll find people like Raphael Grossman who bought into uh, VR really early on. Yeah. I follow, I'm close with Tom. Well, look Robert, at Brennan, so. Brennan Spiegel and what he's doing, yeah. right? Yeah, so, yeah. so, so yeah. I would say if you're interested in this, follow the leaders. I follow Tom Lowry at Microsoft. Yeah. I follow Raphael Grossman at, um, who's up in New Hampshire.